Hey everybody, welcome back. In today's episode, I'm going to be doing a review of this water distillation machine that I purchased on Amazon. Clean drinking water is essential to have in case of an emergency. For example, if your water infrastructure goes down and you can't drink the tap water. You could probably find other sources of water that might be undrinkable or dirty because they're contaminated with bacteria or other pollutants. But a water distillation machine should be able to get the contaminants out of your water by evaporating the water and then condensing it, leaving you with the pure water inside the collection tank. So in this episode, I have this uh, this unit and I'm going to be testing it out to see approximately how much energy that it uses, what the timing is like for it to be used. So I want to try out di uh, several different types of inputs and we'll see what we get. So before we get to the experiments, I'd like to show you the unboxing of this device and everything that it comes with. Here's the instruction manual and one of the interesting things about it is the number of grammatical errors inside of the instructions. It's probably made by a Chinese company. There's a bottle of cleaning detergent. However, it doesn't say what the active ingredient is. I'll just have to assume that it's citric acid because that's what's recommended to be used in the instructions. There's the electrical cord and a charcoal filter that you could put near the output of the machine. And I think that goes to show that it doesn't quite filter out everything. Otherwise, you wouldn't need a charcoal filter. There's a lid for the collection container. Now for the unit itself. This top part is the condenser, which is going to cause the water vapor coming from the machine to turn into a liquid again. And the bottom part is the boiler, which boils off the water, turning into vapor, which goes into the condenser. The way that this was packaged had the collection container, which is made of glass, sitting inside the boiler. So you have to take that out, and that's where the distilled water is going to flow into. For the initial run of this device, I'm going to be using one liter of tap water. According to the instructions, before you use this for drinking water, you need to do a cleaning run. Put my water inside of the evaporation tank. And now I'm gonna plug this in and start the machine. So for the first run, all I have to do is uh, plug it in and the machine should start to run. Uh, as you can see there, there's a fan and I assume that is to help with the condenser cool off the water as it evaporates. Right now it's pulling about 730 watts and uh, we're going to measure how much energy it takes to process one liter of water. At about 20 minutes you can see some condensation forming inside of the tank. It's been just a little bit over an hour and uh, this thing seems to have finished. Let's see how much output that we got from it. So one liter went in and it seems like we lost maybe like about 50 milliliters or so in evaporation or that didn't make it out of the uh, distillation. No, not a lot of minerals in the tap water. You could see like some, I guess, salts at the bottom. And this used about 0.8 uh, of a kilowatt hour to do one liter of water purification. All right, so I'm gonna pour this and take a sip and see how it tastes. You know, the distilled water, it's got a weird kind of like a burnt taste to it. Oh wait, maybe I'm not supposed to drink this. According to the instructions, before you use this for drinking water, you need to do a cleaning run of the system initially anyway. A cleaning run, a cleaning run, a cleaning run. Shit. Yeah, maybe it has a little bit of a metallic taste to it because uh, this was just supposed to be initial uh, cleaning run of the of the machine so I don't know maybe I just drank a little bit of metal or something like that okay for the next experiment that I want to do I have this pot of coffee and I want to see what happens when I run this through the distiller if the water comes out completely clean um, so I'm going to filter out all the coffee particles see how much we got 
Okay, we've got about three quarters of a liter here. Uh, I'm going to put this into the tank and I'm going to run the distiller and see how clean it gets coffee water. And to make this round a little more interesting, I'm going to be using the EcoFlow Delta as the power source. And we're going to see how well it does because this will simulate a situation where you're without clean water and without power. So you have to use an emergency power source and uh, you might need to do something like this to generate drinkable water. So I'm going to uh, put the lid on and um, put this cap on here. And then uh, you hit the reset button to start it. And there it goes. Okay, so we're about halfway right now. Let's see, here's the one liter mark. So I'm actually gonna stop this early and let's see how much it used up as far as energy goes. Okay, so we started in the 90s, used about half of the battery. Um, I am going to stop this right now. So I'm stop it this way. No, you have to stop it by cutting the power, okay. So, I want to stop this early because, let's look on the inside what we got going on here. Ow! Shit! It's hot! Okay, so I just burned my thumb with a little bit of hot steam there. I'm going to try doing this again. Okay, let's take a look inside here now. So, uh, this coffee is a lot more concentrated. The reason I'm going to stop this early and test out the water is because I'm concerned that whatever's in the bottom of this pot might cook and then those chemicals that you don't want inside your water uh, could make their way up through the uh, distillation machine and into your collection pot. And I'm wondering if that's why the first batch that I had had a very metallic taste to it. Upon doing further research on water distillation, I found several articles suggesting that contaminants that have a boiling point below or close to that of water can escape with the water vapor. Some of those organic compounds include benzene, toluene, and alcohols like methanol. In fact, when alcohol is being distilled for liquor, the first batch that comes out of the still is called a foreshot, and it gets discarded because it contains impurities. Chemicals like acetone and a type of alcohol called methanol that you don't want mixed in with the ethanol that you're going to be drinking. All right, so here's the distilled coffee water. I just want to see what the taste is like. You know, oddly, it has a little bit of the coffee flavor to it. And it tastes like burnt coffee, which is kind of weird. So I'm thinking that some of the chemicals, some of the organics inside of the coffee are probably making their way up through the distillation machine and into the pot. Because this water is clear, but I could taste coffee in it. It's a little bit metallic tasting too. Okay, so for the final part of this experiment, I'm going to use this alcohol, this St. Elmo's, bourbon that I don't really like. The reason I'm doing alcohol is because alcohol has a lower boiling point than water. So what should ha happen in this experiment is the alcohol would come out first and then at a different temperature you'd have pure water coming out. So you'd have to remove, you have to co do a collection of the pure alcohol first and then remove that and then at the right temperature start collecting the purified water at specifically at the boiling point of water. So I have that nasty bourbon there. I really don't like Costco gin so I'm going to try uh, boiling some of this. Now yeah, we got about 400 milliliters of alcohol here. I'm going to water it down a little bit with some tap water. 
And so I would expect to be able to um, separate the alcohol from the water in this and we'll see how that goes. All right, so I'm gonna pour this in. All right, it's only been a few minutes. And as you can see here, we have a clear liquid trickling out. I'm assuming this is the alcohol. Yeah, it definitely smells like really strong alcohol. So it's probably pure ethanol coming out. And uh, this is something that actually kind of concerns me about this particular water distiller is that you could have other agents within the water that you're trying to purify that have different boiling points. And when you're distilling, you have an opportunity to remove those elements at different boiling points from the water. But the problem is if they all end up in the same collection tank, you're still going to have those contaminants in the water. So what a system like this really needs is a secondary collection tank for all the things that aren't pure water to go into. And then it will only collect and put the pure water in at exactly the vapor that's coming through at the boiling point of water. Any more, any less, should go to a different collection tank. So like in this case, we threw this pure alcohol in here and then we distilled it and uh, used all of this from the same collection tank, we'd still have the water with the alcohol in it. And we don't want that. We want to separate it so that it's pure water. And unfortunately, this thing doesn't even give you a thermometer or a way of reading what the temperature is so that you could manually determine, you know, what's coming out at whatever temperature. Okay, so at some point, I think the water actually started getting mixed in with the alcohol. I've been trying to keep my eye on this, but I think what's coming out of this now is pure water. And, and as you can see, like, the, the way that it's breaking up is different. But I don't know because I, I can't, I don't know what the internal temperature is of the liquid that's coming through there. Uh, however, this is mostly completely pure alcohol. In fact, if I smell it, ooh, it has a very strong smell to it. So if this jar is actually pure alcohol, then it should be flammable. So I'm going to test that out here. Actually, that might be a lot of flammable stuff, but let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. Blue flame. All right, so I shut this thing off a little bit early because I couldn't tell exactly when it was done distilling the alcohol versus when it's done with the water. So I switched out the jar when I thought there was water coming out. And um, I ran that for a while. I tested it out. So I'm just going to taste this and see what it tastes like. Whatever this is, it doesn't taste very good at all. Tastes a little bit metallic. Tastes very alcoholy. I think I have some of the distilled water mixed in with the alcohol here. So, you know, it wasn't really perfect at, you know, nailing the correct temperature to separate these things. Uh, and I think if this thing had a uh, had a temperature gauge on it, uh, it would be a lot more helpful for that, for, for making sure that you've separated all the non-water things out by boiling temperature. Because when they're, even when they're distilling alcohol at, at certain temperatures, there's other forms of alcohol that come out like methanol and things like that, that you don't want in your alcohol beverage. Uh, and they separate those out by temperature. And you should be able to do the same thing with a water distiller like this. Unfortunately, this is not a very sophisticated one and it is what it is. When initially planning this video, I wanted to run a fourth experiment to purify water from a retention pond, but upon seeing the results of the first three experiments, it seems that a lot of impurities could make it through the distiller. Given that a retention pond contains a lot of hazardous chemicals like lawn treatment herbicide and runoff from the local roads, I decided to skip this part of the experiment. A distiller might be effective at extracting dissolved solids like salt, but it seems to have issues removing things that can boil along with the water and travel with the water vapor into the collection tank. So anyway, I hope you found this video to be fun and interesting. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more stuff like this and more programming stuff. 
See you in the next video.